What's up, everybody? Welcome to Viewpoint Abroad. I'm John. I'm an expat who's been living abroad for about 15 years now. I've been in China for about 12 years. And over here, we just talk about all things related to living abroad. And uh, today, this video was actually by request from a viewer. And he asked me, uh, what's the difference between living in some of the bigger cities versus the smaller cities in China? So we're going to talk about that today. I'm going to give you the pros and cons of the bigger cities and the smaller cities. And at the end, I'll give you my personal recommendation. Now, um, I know this because I'm in China for about 12 years now, and I've lived in both big cities and small cities. So uh, yeah, let's just dive right on in. So first thing, uh, when it comes to uh, the bigger cities in China, there are definitely a lot of pros and there's a few cons, not a lot, but there are a few cons. So uh, first of all, when living in a bigger city in China, one of the, the biggest uh, pros is just gonna be because the city, the, they're mega cities, right? We're talking like Shenzhen, Shanghai, Beijing, Guangzhou. They're really big mega cities with 20, 25 million people. So you have excellent opportunities for networking and meeting lots of people that can be really beneficial to you, to your uh, your career or your time living abroad. So the networking opportunities in big cities are amazing. Now, uh, when it comes to the smaller cities, it's exact opposite. Um, you're not gonna have many chances at all to do any networking or meet anybody that's gonna be, uh, you know, in, in a position that's gonna be able to really help you a lot, I, I don't think, um, from my own experience. Um, I haven't really met many people that would help benefit my career or my life um, from these smaller cities. So um, also living in a big city, one of the pros uh, will be just like the lifestyle is much different and it won't be so much different to what you're used to at home because there's, you have access to everything. It's like any type of food you can imagine, you can find it. So, if, you know, if you feel homesick, you can literally just kind of go out in the city anywhere and find some food from wherever you're from, right? <clears throat> so that's definitely one of the pros. Now, in a smaller city, you're going to be, uh, your choices are just going to be very limited, right? Like, uh, I live in a small city now, and there's not very many foreign restaurants at all, uh, especially American restaurants. Uh, most of the foreign restaurants that you will see are like Japanese or Korean, and there's not even a lot of them. And so if you're something else, like some other nationality, like Mexican or whatever, or Spanish, but any nationalities, there's not many options to choose from for other types of food other than Asian foods. Um, so your options are gonna be very limited when it comes to that sort of thing. So you'll be often uh, maybe cooking at home more often than not if you really, you, you need to have uh, Western food. If you choose to eat like the locals, it doesn't matter, big city, small city, you can find those things anywhere. So um, another uh, plus to being in a big city, I would say definitely be like the, I guess this will kind of go with networking, but like the, the opportunities for relationships and things. So uh, meeting friends and making friends with people, you're gonna meet a lot more people who you can communicate with in English if you don't know Chinese language. So, um, you know, you can meet people from all over the world. And it's also good for relationships too, because a lot of, even the locals there, a lot of them there will have certain types of jobs where they require to know English and things like that for their jobs, because these big cities have huge, like, you know, international companies and things like that. So your dating life will probably be much better also, just because you'll be able to meet someone you can communicate with easily. So um, that's gonna be definitely a plus. In the smaller cities, again, it's the exact opposite. Uh, most people you meet aren't going to speak any English with the exception of like, hello, <laughs> or something like that. You're not going to be able to have many friendships with local people and expats because there's not many expats at all. And so your dating life and friendships and stuff may suffer. So you may have to be comfortable with, uh, you know, spending a lot of time alone or, and with yourself. So that could be a bad thing depending on who you are. So um, that's that part. Now, um, Another thing for bigger cities, uh, a pro would definitely be the transportation. Even though there's so many people, the public transportation is very convenient. I mean, you can literally go anywhere, like on the subway train, for like uh, less than a dollar, and anywhere in the city, and it can get you close to anywhere within walking distance for the most part. So anywhere you want to go, hop on the train, a dollar or less, and you can travel to where you want to go, walk for five minutes, and bam, you're there. So it's quite convenient. 
to take the subway train or something like that in all of these big cities. Now, again, on the opposite end of the spectrum, if you're in a smaller city, the public transportation isn't very good. So, um, you know, most of the smaller cities don't even have a subway system. So your only means of transportation will be either like a bus or a taxi or uh, yourself, like walk or ride a bike. So um, even the bus is not easy to navigate, especially if you don't know the language because nothing on the, the bus routes or anything like that, they're all in 100% Chinese. There's no English at all whatsoever. So if you don't know the address of where you're going, and a lot of times even the bus drivers won't help you. Like if you try to ask the bus driver like, oh, do you go, do you go to this place or this place? They don't have time for that because everybody on the bus is in a rush. And so a lot of times they won't be able to, to help you. So you'd have to figure that out on your own, which is not very convenient. So most of the time uh, in a smaller city, you're probably gonna want to live nearby where you go all the time. So nearby your work probably, or uh, nearby where you frequent. So uh, that's definitely gonna be a con. Um, now, one of the plus sides of that though is, if you do have your own transportation, like myself, I have a car here in China. So for me, living in a smaller city is convenient because I can drive anywhere I wanna go and I can get there pretty quick because it's not a lot of people. Now in the bigger cities, that's probably a con having your own car in my opinion. So I've had, my, I've had a car in the bigger cities and just because the sheer amount of people on the road, it can be uh, very time consuming to drive anywhere because the amount of traffic and the amount of people, and it's actually faster and more convenient to take the subway and even cheaper because when you drive anywhere, you have to pay parking fees and things like that. And those parking fees are three or four or five times more expensive than the cost of public transportation. So owning a car in a big city would definitely be a con due to the amount of traffic you have to face and things like that. So um, small city, that's definitely a pro, a pro for small city is having your, your own car, the, getting around. Um, now another thing for bigger cities, um, I guess one of the pros would be the amount of job opportunities because they're huge mega cities. There are so many jobs everywhere and you can literally thousands and thousands of jobs to choose from. Now the downside to that same thing is because they're big mega cities, most people want to live there. So the, uh, the competition for these jobs can be quite high, which in turn usually drives the salary down a little bit so you don't make as much money, but you can't actually work for a really good company or find a good job, but it's probably going to be less money because the amount of competition is really high. Now on the, in the smaller cities, it's the opposite end of the spectrum. The opportunities for jobs, uh, you know, there's not going to be as many jobs to choose from. But when it comes to uh, trying to find one of those jobs, you'll be at the top of the list and the competition is very low. So you can easily get into those jobs and also they'll be willing to pay you a lot more money than what you can make in some of the bigger cities because it's hard for them to fill that position. So they'll be willing to shell out more money, you know, for you to come there to a smaller city or take those jobs. Now, another plus to that will be in the smaller cities when you take these jobs that uh, pay you know decent amounts of money you're also going to be treated quite well because they just they really treat you really nice because they don't really have many expats and they want to show you how good everything is in in their town or their area and they treat you really really well and they want you to stick around for a long time so your your uh, quality of work and your uh, work life environment will probably be pretty pretty good as far as the treatment that you get and the amount of salary you get compared to bigger cities when so many foreigners are are coming and going it's just like a revolving door and they don't really take much time to to go out of their way to do things for you because they just kind of assume you're going to leave and somebody else is going to come in right so um, that's one of the differences when it comes to working in the bigger cities versus the smaller cities so um the last thing I'll touch on today is gonna to be the cost of living. Now, obviously in the big mega cities, um, it's gonna be a lot more expensive to live and so you're gonna earn less money. So the cost of living is definitely gonna be a def definite con when it comes to the bigger cities. Um, you know, you might, uh, even though you'll make less money, your cost of living is gonna be really expensive. Like for example, a, a small one bedroom apartment in Shenzhen is gonna cost you about $1,000 per month. Now, if you're in uh, a smaller city, like where I'm at now, you can get a small one-bedroom apartment for about $150, $160 a month. 
Okay, it's so like my current apartment actually is a three bedroom apartment. As you can see, it's quite spacious. It's about uh, 1,200 square feet and I pay about $300 a month for this apartment. So I can have, you know, triple the space for a third of the price. So um, in smaller cities, the high salary, the low cost of living is definitely a big plus because you have more disposable income you can save and, uh, you know, put away for whatever other things. And also you don't spend as much money because there's not so many things to do like the nightlife and the food and stuff like that. So uh, you really have an opportunity to save a lot more money when you're in a smaller city. So uh, since I've been through the, all of this before, I'll give you my recommendation. If you're considering you know, coming to China for work or to live, I would definitely suggest that you start out in a bigger city. And I know some of you people are like, oh, but the money is, you know, let's pay more expensive. Yeah, that's right. But when you start out in the bigger city, you're not going to have as much culture shock for one, because you'll have lots of people around you can communicate with and be friends with and lots of things you can find to do, like from your home country, as far as food and nightlife and things like that. And you'll have an opportunity opportunity to uh, network with a lot of people and meet lots of people that could really benefit your career and your time in China. So I would definitely start out in the bigger city and do that for a couple of years, you know, network, meet lots of people and uh, just get established in China and start learning the culture and how things go. And then after a few years, then I would recommend actually moving to a smaller city now that you've learned more about the culture and you have all these uh, contacts and things like that. So if you do need anything or want to start some type of business or anything like that, then you have the contacts and the people who are there to help you and guide you as opposed to if you start out in a smaller city, you're not going to be able to network and, uh, and blend in very well. So uh, that's going to be my recommendation for what I would do if I was just now moving to China. I would move to a big city, find a job and spend two or three years just networking and meeting people and building up a, a huge list of important contacts um, that can help me later down the road as far as you know my life in China goes or businesses and jobs and those kind of things and then I would transfer to moving in a smaller city so that's my take on it that's what I would do if you thought this was helpful or you liked the video hit the like hit the subscribe come back for more new videos every week and I'll see you guys next time